Hello, this is Scott McDonald, and this is the short version of our weekly webinar and podcast. If you'll please go to our website, you can see the longer version, which is about a half an hour and has a lot more details regarding the issues which I'm discussing. Now, let's talk about the topic, which is about population density. When Bill Clinton was running for president, the big mantra that they went through, they're saying, was it's the economy stupid. If you didn't understand that everybody was interested in the economy, well, you are missing the boat. But right now, everybody's not worried about where to go, where to put a practice. On just economic terms, they want to know about one other issue. It's population density, dummy. Meaning, of course, that everybody, after they've got out of the lockdown, are sort of deciding, I do not want to go back to having somebody live right on top of my shoulders. I want to have a bigger home. I want to have a way to get to a backyard. I want to have outdoor recreation, which I've been denying myself for a long time. Now, I recognize that there's COVID-19 debates going on about proper treatment and masking and all that. I got it. But what people don't seem to really get is what people are doing about it. They're looking for those locations that don't have a lot of density. Now, of the 10 largest cities in the United States, eight of them lost population. They lost population because, and you can say this with confidence, they lost population because of their previous success. Population density is what people want to avoid. So if you look at the two exceptions, I said eight in in the 10, well, Phoenix and San Antonio are large and growing populations, and they did reasonably well, didn't lose population. All the rest of the large ones did. So what happened? Well, Phoenix and San Antonio both have kind of a, a wide spread out thing. So in terms of population size, they're big. But in terms of population density, how many people live per square mile? It's not that great. Now, there's a couple of other things that, that people liked about San Antonio and Phoenix, and, and they were reported in their surveys, they kind of like the idea that living is less expensive. The cost of building a single family dwelling in California and New York is sky high and getting higher, particularly as we consider the the problems of inflation. But they're mitigating these issues taxation wise and cost of living. And San Antonio and Phoenix are kind of at the top of their game. Now, it doesn't mean that every large city is doomed. I don't think they are. And it also doesn't mean that smaller cities like Albuquerque are really doing that great. I mean, some smaller cities that are not densely populated are also losing population. But there are reasons why. And and the reasons why they're doing well or doing poorly are unique to the areas that they're in. We know that parts of uh, Kentucky are not doing well because they're high-tax states. If you look at Western Tennessee, which has been traditionally excellent, Memphis hasn't been keeping up with the growth that's happening elsewhere either. Once again, it's the idea that the economy, people can't get jobs, and that they don't feel that the value of their homes or the return on the investment they're getting from their their places of work are that great. Now, look, this is a, a, a thing I can talk about on every city in the United States, but it doesn't help you. If you want to know what is going to work in your particular case, I want you to consider doing a telephone consultation. The telephone consultation is an inexpensive and easy thing to plan, and we can talk about the demographics that are going on right now and likely to occur in the near future. And it is, by the way, a a service that is specifically for doctors. Look, I recognize that there are lots of other people out there who are talking in the media about places that they want to go or don't want to go. But you're not in every other business. You're, you're a doctor. And knowing that you're a doctor means that you've got to have staff. And very often, you've got a spouse or a, a significant other who's also a doctor. And that sets up special pressures on you to try to find a place that's good for not just one, but two professionals. If we can help you, please take a look at Dr. Demographics for a, a longer version of this report. Or to order a report or study or telephone consultation, our job is to make your life a little bit easier and make sure that we have sane doctors in the United States. Because after all, if you're not sane, you aren't having fun, well, kind of what's the point of it all, right?
Anyway, this is Scott McDonald. See us at www.drdemographics.com and take care. Bye-bye.